Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Market Update. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the stock market bounce day two, why Chinese stocks were on fire yesterday, and last, the Federal Reserve interest rate hike strategy. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. The market bounced significantly again yesterday. Is the market bottom in? Uh, good morning, Allison. Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, you know, I think so. Uh, we had, you know, we talked about the max pain point a couple of days ago. Then we talked about, you know, hey, things are starting. You know, the three things we have for the market to go higher. We need inflation to get a little bit of a break, uh, which it did. And the PPI index, at least just a little bit of one. We need the uh, Fed to raise interest rates and be on a regular game plan. They did that yesterday. And then the last one, we need things to, you know, some so provide some semblance of hope that the Ukraine Russia. Uh, conflict has an end in sight. Now, I wouldn't say there's necessarily an end, but I think it's certainly trending towards uh, maybe a stalemate here in, in a few weeks and, and then and then off into, uh, you know, the end of the conflict, whatever that may look like. So we shall see. But I think the markets were in a position to celebrate. I think tech certainly had been oversold. Uh, so that's why we got the bounce. So when you look at like the NASDAQ, which you can see the futures are a little bit in the red today, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, how things go. We look at the NASDAQ, you're like, man, this is a huge move up. And it, and it is uh, certainly. But when, you know, you go to the one year chart, you're like, OK, we aren't even close to where we were. Right. So that's why I think we do have a lot more room to the to the upside as, uh, you know, money, uh, like I like to say, money is like water. So what happens in times of volatility is the money flows out of the market because people just want to take risk off. And you've been hearing the term sell everything market, you know, bonds are down, stocks are down. You know, people are saying, Steve, is there any place to invest in the market? Well, when everybody is selling, the answer is no. I mean, everything sold off. And now, you know, things are starting to be bought again. So I think there's, it's safe to move back into tech. You're getting a, uh, a an entry point here that you, uh, you that you can only hope for. So in conclusion, I do think the bottom is in and that we sort of uh, start the stair step higher from here. Last, the Federal Reserve raised rates yesterday for the first time in three years. Can you explain their game plan and how it will affect the markets? Yeah, you bet. The uh, Federal Reserve, uh, you know, that, that was what everybody was waiting for uh, yesterday. And, you know, they, they did. They raised, you know, exactly what Chairman Jay Powell had said. Um, you know, we're going to uh, raise interest rates. And he did, you know, the quarter point. Um, six more ahead. So that would forecast that basically every meeting this year uh, for their game plan would be to add a quarter point. So obviously you can do seven times quarter. You end up at the end of the year with 1.75 as the uh, short-term interest rate. I think it's smart on their part. I don't think that'll happen. I don't think we'll raise every single time, but you don't know, right? You, inflation does have to at least you know show signs of breaking at some point. Otherwise, they're going to continue to raise. So I think it's better to forecast that there's going to be seven and then there's only going to be five and then the market goes higher from that versus forecasting five and then, you know, you go to uh, seven from there. But it, it is really important to keep things in perspective. Uh, so when you go down here, I just want to show you one chart. You know, here's the federal funds effective rate for the past, you know, 42 years, uh, if you will. Um, so... You know, we're historically low rates, right? We're just bouncing right off of zero right here. So, you know, look at this chart. I mean, this is insane. Uh, this is where if you made money in real estate, you've probably been paying attention right in here. You know, 2015 up through 2018, we tried to raise rates, had to bring them back to zero. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can raise them this time and actually stay there or if we're going to end up with something else kind of uh, taking over. Um, but overall, I think the, the the Federal Reserve is in a good game plan and the prediction of the seven interest rate uh, hikes for the year is uh, is overall favorable for the market. Last, all of the left for dead Chinese stocks have made huge gains yesterday. What happened? I will tell you what's interesting is that the Chinese stock, you know, we've been talking about these on occasion and uh, it was a few days ago, might even been uh, down here as well that we talked about, you know, China's left for dead, right? You always have government risk uh, with China itself being a communist country. And then you have U.S. risk of uh, you know, our own country risk of delisting them. So they've been, you know, they announced five names within the past week that they were, you know, that are on the docket for delisting. 
And, you know, so what is China do? They step in, these things sold off hard. I mean, Didi, uh, the uh, Chinese Uber, if you will, is, uh, you know, been crushed. It went from $10 down to like $2 and change. Well, yesterday, everything bounced because China came out and you said that they were, you know, going to back their companies, if you will. I'm trying to find the um, exact Chinese government supports listing of companies overseas, said it's crackdown on technology companies should end soon. You know, that's this mid paragraph right here. And you can find this on CNBC.com. Look at these numbers. Alibaba, 36%. JD, 39%. Pinduo Duo, one of my favorite names out there, 56%. I mean, these things came kind of screaming back, but really... You know, when you say screaming back, look at this chart and I'll say, ha ha, screaming back, right? So even Baba that came back, you know, 36% yesterday, you go to a six month chart and, and that's where you are, right? So, I mean, these things really have been just crushed. Uh, and now there are some uh, signs of hope in there. So in, in some, if you're up for the risk, you're going to get a great price on the Chinese stocks. Uh, however, if you're not up for the risk, I would simply just stay away. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at vipservices at anchorstarwealth.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Alice Anchorstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.